Thank you, Stella. And our next speaker will be Mr. Tom Munoz. He is a physics and system thinking teacher. Tom believes that understanding scientific principles and practices makes life better. And in his speech today, he will dive into spiritual naturalism and give us unforgettable insights. Let's welcome Tom to the stage. Climate emergency is here. Climate scientists agree. Greenhouse gases added to the atmosphere uh, by human activities uh, cause global warming. The climate emergency is here. Faster than expected, uh, to take a phrase from uh, the Doomosphere, uh, an informal group of people who discuss climate breakdown and societal collapse online. I see no reason to believe our current economic and political systems are fit for purpose to deal, to mitigate this predicament. And I'm not just talking about climate change, I'm talking about the constellation of issues we are facing, or what some call the holy crisis. All evidence suggests that humanity is now exceeding Earth's carrying capacity. We are now fully in ecological overshoot. And as ecologists know, after overshoot, you either get gradual decline or abrupt collapse. The decisions we make and the actions we take in the next few decades will determine whether our civilization declines or collapses. Now, some, some pundits doubt uh, green technology, things like hydro, solar, wind, uh, carbon capture, battery electric vehicles, synthetic fuels, lab-grown meats, uh, recycling. What else have we got? More efficient production processes, uh, better appliances. Now, in my opinion, most of those things are just greenwashing, they are lies. Some of these ideas actually do have substance, and they will uh, help us. They do actually offer genuine improvements. But I think none of this matters as long as the underlying worldview stays the same. The worldview of materialism, progress, and eternal growth. Growth is cancer. Cancer kills. Some thinkers, scholars, and scientists uh, argue that the root cause of our predicament is this. Global industrial civilization has removed the sacred almost completely from our lives. Gods are superstition instead of personifications of sacred values. Rituals are a waste of time. As writer and recovering uh, environmentalist Paul Kingsnorth writes, we have surrendered to the machine. Economic growth, progress, technology, power and money are the gods many of us worship. And rampant retail therapy has replaced rituals. So what do we do?
Let's start with a little bit of uh, human psychology. Stella's laughing. Social psychology is Jonathan Haidt. Haidt currently at uh, NYU's uh, Stern School of Business uh, developed moral foundations theory to explain the evolutionary origins of human moral reasoning based on innate gut feelings rather than uh, reasoning and logic. And in the current iteration of his theory, he lists six moral foundations, usually listed as a concern um, and its opposite. So the first moral concern that he lists is care harm, the instinct to protect others. Then there's fairness cheating. The instinct to render justice and to punish cheating. Loyalty betrayal. The instinct to stand up for our in-group. Authority subversion. The instinct to submit to tradition and obey legitimate authority. Sanctity degradation. The instinct to avoid disgust and a concern for physical and spiritual purity. And finally, liberty oppression, the instinct to keep dominant group members in check. Individuals differ in how sensitive they are to these six concerns. Some are more sensitive than others. And the theory is also used to explain the difference between groups of people, cultures, and political ideologies. Uh, to give you an example, Jonathan Hyde argues that in the US, uh, left-leaning liberals are extremely sensitive to care and fairness, what he calls the individualizing cluster, while right-leaning conservatives Yes, they, they are sensitive to care and fairness, but in addition, they're very sensitive to loyalty, authority, and sanctity, what he calls the binding cluster. Now, I think we can, be, we can build on these social foundations. We can build on these social foundations. Uh, I think we can expand care and fairness to include care for, and, and well, I think we can build on care and sanctity. We can expand this to include care for nature and the sanctity of nature. A look at history uh, shows you that few forces are as powerful um, as religion. Millions of people have, and by the way, with religion I mean any set of beliefs, values, and practices that follow um, the teachings of a spiritual being. Uh, there don't have to be any gods or supernatural beings involved. Millions of people have died in wars and struggles uh, in the name of religion, country, or ideology. Even when struggles are ostensibly about resources, often religion is used as an excuse. It often takes some strong religious beliefs to make people pick up a weapon and go after the enemy. So perhaps if I want to promote care for nature and the sanctity of nature, Maybe we have to dress it up as religion in order for it to succeed in the marketplace of ideas. To use a phrase for you out of machine lexicon. So I'd like to bring your attention to one belief system uh, that I think that might help with this, and it's called spiritual naturalism, sometimes called religious naturalism. According to this spiritual naturalist society. 
spiritual naturalists see the universe as a natural and sacred holy that is best explored using science and reason. Spiritual naturalists um, strive to become wiser and live a better life through uh, lifelong learning, through character development, and through quiet contemplation. Spiritual naturalists strive to make uh, the world a better place for all, not just people, but all creatures, great and small. Now you might ask, why is it called spiritual naturalism? Well, naturalism refers to the belief that there is one world, the natural world, which evolves according to the laws of nature. And the way we learn to understand this one world, this nature, is through observation. So in other words, naturalists believe that nature is real and that it is best understood through scientific practices. So naturalists uh, display intellectual humility. They only concern themselves with things for which there is empirical observational evidence. There might be other things that might or might not exist, but when facing questions beyond current scientific understanding, a naturalist would simply say, we don't know. Maybe the most, optimist, most optimistic of that would add it yet. I think you can now infer that the spiritual does not refer to gods or supernatural beings. Uh, it here goes back to the original meaning of the Latin root word spiritus. Wind, breath, essence. The spiritual is about the essential, the fundamental, the deep, rather than the mundane, the superficial, and the shallow. The spiritual uh, implies a sense of wonder and mystery and awe when we are faced with the beauty and power of nature. And the spiritual also had, can be understood in a moral sense. Practitioners of this, they um, display, or they, they have compassion, they uh, desire justice, they try to do the right thing for themselves, for others, for all living and non-living things. So in short, spiritual naturalism uh, combines both science and religion and strives for personal well-being, uh, social harmony, and ecological integrity. Eco-theologian and progressive Christian minister and uh, author, Reverend Michael Dowd, expresses his spiritual naturalist credo as like this. Reality is my God. Evidence is my scripture. Big history is my creation story. Ecology is my theology. Integrity is my salvation. And doing everything I can to ensure a just and healthy future, not just for humanity, but for all of creation, is my mission. Now, some of you might notice the decidedly biblical language, maybe it put some people off. So, a uh, philosopher and thinker and former Christian, J.N. Forrest, has rephrased this to get rid of the Christian language. Nature is my ultimate concern. Evidence is my authority. Evolution is my great merit. Expanding consciousness is my real happiness. 
and working for a wiser and better world is my mission. Your ultimate concern is what matters most to you, is what sits on the throne at the center of your cultural civilization. Expanding consciousness means going beyond selfishness and human-centeredness. Uh, it's about deepening and broadening our understanding that we are all interconnected with nature. Now, I think this gets to the core of what is wrong um, with um, the world today. We have removed nature from the center um, of our human universe. Uh, instead, we have materialism, consumerism, and progress uh, at the center. So I think that spiritual naturalism gets uh, like Now, you might ask, what if, what if none of these claims are true? Like, I, I don't believe in of these claims. Um, what if there is no one world? Yeah. What if nature is a real world? What if we live in a simulation? What if free will doesn't exist? Uh, well, my answer to that is, so what? Uh, I'm going to quote at length from Michael Pugh and Christine Borsinato's book, The Path, what Chinese philosophers can teach us about real life. The ritual is absolutely necessary, but that it makes no difference whether the spirits are participating or not. We sacrifice to them, he said, as if they are there. What matters is participating in the ritual fully. For Confucius, the ritual was essential because of what it did for the people performing it. To ask whether these ritual acts actually affected the deceased, deceased or not missed the point of the entirety. Family members needed to make the sacrifices because acting as if the ancestors were there brought about change within them. I think living as if certain things are true uh, is a very powerful idea. Living as if Nature is our ultimate concern, and alleviate suffering, and help us lead a better life. Living as if nature is our ultimate concern, can promote personal well-being, social harmony, and ecological integrity. Living as if nature is our ultimate concern, might perhaps help us avoid civilizational collapse. So, do I actually believe the whole world will adopt spiritual naturalism or a similar worldview that puts nature uh, at the center of the human world? Not really. Just try. But then I remind myself we live in very unusual times. Modern humans have been around for over 300,000 years. And thousands of cultures and civilizations and societies have come and gone. And all of them, to some extent, believed in the sacredness of all life on Earth. Out of the myriad cultures that have existed, global industrial civilization is the all black seems to be the only one that does not put nature in its center. So, this civilization is going to end either by choice or through Mother Nature's brute force. But then again, once upon a time, Indian prince changed the world. 500 years later, a carpenter's son changed the world once more. I don't know. Maybe it will happen again. Thank you.